I'm locked up. Gonna let me out. I'm locked up. Gonna let me out. We fresh out of Patreon jail. Hell Black is back, baby. You feel me? Back at it again with a motherfucking video episode. You better be you careful. The niggas might be listening to this episode. We gonna be right they back in there. <laughs> they gonna cancel our shit next time. Have they ever done that to anyone? Uh, they, they suspended us, but... Like, they, like they can't just they cancel us. Like, shit. nah, nigga, you lose your... You lose your Privilege. They probably Patreon. could, but I'm sure know, they do that to people all the time. You know, we got lawyers over here, so fuck with our bag, we coming for yours. Hello. Straight up. Hella black <laughs> episode twenty two. We ain't intimidated by the Patreon jail. You know, we spent three, four days in there, but we must be a little intimidated because <laughs> Yeah, they can choose your words wisely. They are uh, definitely a little intimidated. They start yeah. talking about taking that cheese away. Taking my money away. Yeah. Come on. That yeah, is fucked up. But you know, we back. Support us on Patreon though, you feel me? Patreon.com. <laughs> <laughs> Slash hell <Hellbuck. laughs> For real though, I bet if we had like 500 patrons, though, you feel me? They wouldn't fuck with us because we're making hella money. You know what I'm saying? If yeah. we had 500 patrons, that's fucking with their check too. I was saying they get so a we're a small account. And they get a yeah. small percentage. If we had a lot of patrons, a lot of support, they ain't gonna fuck with us like they was trying to, you know, like we some little ducklings out there. Well, that, shit was, that shit was hella unfortunate, the whole situation, but we'll go into that later yeah. on into the podcast. Yeah. Hella Black episode 22. Follow right us. On YouTube, mm-hmm. subscribe, you feel me? We had our first episode, so tap in with our YouTube, like, right now. Yeah. While you're listening, as long as you're not driving. But if you're driving, pull the fuck over right now. Tap subscribe, in. you feel me? We need to get a 1,000 subscribers. Is our is our YouTube Rocky. channel just it's Hella, Hella Black, Black Pod? Pod. Yeah. yeah. It's so going to show up. Type in Hella Black Pod. Let me see. Ooh, Hella Black Pod. It's right there. You got a fresh cut this time too, bro. Oh yeah, I told y'all. You can zoom in on my waves. See, so people really know. Oh, you gonna do it on, on post? Yeah, post production, nigga. They gonna zoom in. Y'all gonna see, nigga. This ain't no fucking game. I told y'all. I always uh, have a fresh cut. Y'all called me lacking last time. Nigga, I need to. I Never need to take some. What's it called? Dreaming me? Is that the shit that make anti nausea? I'm getting yeah, seasick over come here, on, man. Man, y'all niggas know it's popping. Man, I didn't know we was recording. Otherwise, you know, I would have got me some fresh braids. But you know, <laughs> it's like two weeks old. Nigga still balling on that shit. You feel me? Uh. <laughs> I'm juiced for us to be back uh, in here, bro. I know, me too. We took a little break, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Niggas was out the country living my best life and shit, but we, we black at it again. Like Can't relate, I was here slaving. <laughs> so we got a good we got a good episode. We really just going to talk today. Like, D just hit me and was like, let's record. I was like, say less. Yeah, and I just... You feel me? I'm tired of being all political. Like, that shit is just like, like we don't only do time. that on the podcast, yeah. right? Like... Being political twenty four seven, not as not in like a sense of like, but even as pe- even as people shit. too, yeah, but like just like you know? constantly like being someone that just is like striving for the liberation of all people gets draining as fuck, bro. So like today I just want to be regular and black and talk about fun shit. Well, not necessarily fun shit. Like I just want to. I think all things. Not be hella serious. Yeah. I feel like we've had a lot of serious episodes lately. Yeah. From when we was talking about what's uh, XX Existencion to. I mean, like, all, 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 all of, of our, our shows, episodes yeah. tend to, like, tie in to, like, dismantling this white oppressive system, but it's, like, I want to do that today, but in a different way, like, just, like, yeah. kind of lighthearted, because sometimes this should be hella heavy and it just be tiring. Yeah, I mean, it should, it's important just to not be all just, because, I mean, both of us are so busy and all, like, bro, we worked all day, got food and came over here to record, you know, so it's, like, and the work that we do is so taxing, too, Yeah, you know, like, it ain't just, like, we're doing some just... You know, brain with. I mean, I don't yeah. want to say that word, but I don't know. And it's not just you know? unique to us either. Like I feel like this is just with anyone who's like striving, like I said, for liberation and for like a better life. Like you're constantly in that mode of like survival grind, grind. and yeah. working, 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 working. That you kind of lose sight of like that's not really all life has to be about. Mm. At least you gotta have a balance. Yeah. You know, it's probably a privileged thing to say too that like you know, that's yeah. not what life is all about. But it is what it is. So yeah, today I wanted to just feel me just talk. Yeah. First, I want to start off with like plugging Liege. Liege is a bar. Is is that what they would, would be considered a bar, right? Yeah, but for Oakland, they might call that shit a club. <laughs> yeah, Liege is a spot in downtown Oakland that's fucking lit. I don't even know what street they on. I want to say twelfth, maybe. I think they on twelfth street, maybe thirteenth. I don't, I don't know. know. I just know how to get it's, there. It's over there. <laughs> is it down the street from Smart and Final? Fuck, I don't know yeah, what it's street right that over is, there. Bro. It's right like all Oakland, right? I don't know. They probably call that shit call some, some weird move. name now because of gentrification. <laughs> but whatever. Look up Liege when you in Oakland. That shit is so lit. They had like a little spark, spoken word slash open mic night last night, bro. Oh, it was the most beautiful black shit I've ever been a part of, bro. Like I'm talking about. I sometimes get like social anxiety when I step in like places that I'm not familiar with, and I get around new people. I get like anxious. Yeah. But the literally the vibrations in there were, oh, bro, it was so calming and peaceful, bro. 
like the lighting, everything, but they were serving food. It was just hella black people in there, and it was so lit. So I wanted to shout them out. I think they do it every Wednesday. For real, for yeah. to tap in. We like we gotta go next weekend. Yeah, next good. Wednesday I'm gonna be out, but like the Wednesday after that, bro, we should definitely slide. It's Make so dope. I think on Thursdays they do like some like jazz shit. For real, yeah, bro. It's like they like quietly like building safe black spaces, bro. Like on the fucking low, they got some real life safe black shit going on. I'm not, I, that's the I shit we need, with, especially yeah. after all this shit that's been popping off in Oakland. Like that's why I was afraid to yeah. even plug it. I'm like, man, these fucking I wish these niggas would. Yeah. <laughs> but like, yeah, bro, it was it was dope. So I definitely want to shout them out. And like, you know, congr- congratulate them on all like the positive work they're doing in the community in Oakland. Cause like that's like that shit it's is important. big, bro. It's super important. Yeah. So I wanted to shout them out. Shout out Leech. Then, you know, shout out to niggas like you. We got all these, you, you know, know, black teachers and black students getting ready to go back to school. I definitely want to give them some fucking, uh, Hello. you right know, here. some some positive energy. <laughs> Send them with some positive vibes as they get ready to take on another school year and school system that is not designed for them to succeed. So y'all go out there, keep y'all sure, heads man. up. You feel me? Shout out to all the black teachers, you feel me, who, oh, man. who really, you know, putting in that work for their students because it's... It's a grind. Bro, and like black teachers <laughs> benefit grind. all students, not just black students. Yeah. Like studies have shown that like having a black teacher is better for all demographics, bro. Mm-hmm. So shout out to all the fucking black teachers out there putting in that work. Shout out to the radical educators out there. You feel me? All the black radical educators really bro, just that's, teaching um, the history, putting yes. in the work, you feel me? Because like if we ain't knowing our history, we ain't finna know the way to move forward, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, it's so important to have black radical educators and it's just, it's important, you know, to support them too. Because oftentimes, like, as a, especially as a black radical, bro, you in the educators, ed- education space, you ain't finna get supported. Like, <laughs> especially working in, like, a historically white institution or a school system that is, you know, dominated by the white power structure. You feel me? Khadijah so, has a, a piece coming out where she talks about, like, the importance of having black radical teachers on staff, bro. Because, like, you know, you'll have, like, a black teacher on staff, but they could obviously be perpetuating the system just as well right yeah. and like even with the way they teach the content that they teach like when you mm-hmm. got black radical teachers on staff bro that's when you start getting a shift in the way that students are taught and what they're taught so like that shit is oh yes i couldn't have said any better bro shout, shout out my out nigga black radical yeah shout out my nigga sure. left that nigga really uh he was my first i feel like radical ass teacher that i, had. I ain't never had one bro my nigga left follow him on uh on twitter at left sent this he, yeah he really be teaching, bro. Really be teaching his ass off. He really put me on to a lot of knowledge. Yeah, facts. You know, so it's really important. Like, I feel like a lot of people, especially, um, you know, people who come into consciousness or organizing, usually they have at least, like, one radical teacher. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? That kind of, like, puts them on. Like, I was, well, I was going to say I never had a radical teacher. I've had yeah. radical teachers, but not inside school systems. Like, not, yeah. in, not in school. Like, I've had, you know, anyone that I'm reading... That I'm listening to, that's a teacher for me. You mm-hmm. feel me? If I'm, if especially since I'm learning something from him. But so yeah, I'm, I've had radical teachers, but never in a school. Like you had a radical teacher yeah. at UC Berkeley. You know what I'm saying like that's that's big. And they don't want us there. That's why it's so important. Like that you have like black students who were really pushing and pushing the needle. You feel me? Like yeah. like when I was a student, we we was really trying to push the needle and get like black radical folks at Cal. You know what I'm saying? It's like imagine having like a black radical dean. <sighs> Like, that shit's going to yeah. shift the entire culture over school, bro. Yeah, bro. I was reading a lot of this shit, uh, like, about Merritt College and shit. Like, Merritt yeah, College was telling was me, really yeah. pushing for, like, a black university. Yeah. Bro. Like, they had, like, the first black president in the junior college system, I believe. Like, mm-hmm. they had the very first black studies department. You feel me? That's where Huey Newton and Bobby Seale was. You feel yeah. me? And, like, they really was trying to make a black university in North Oakland. And then what happened was they essentially moved Merritt up into the hills of East Oakland. You feel me? Not and today. Took all those. Not today, monkeys. You know, so. <laughs> not, not <laughs> but today. that was on some real radical shit, bro. Yeah. Like going in the bookstore and get throwing all that shit out, like saying "fuck that," bro. We want we want a black campus, like on some real shit, you know. Yeah. So I, I feel like we really need education spaces, and we need more black educators because as people talk about, they want a revolution, bro. But like, how many people are educating people? And it doesn't even mean like within the school system, but it means like you know in your daily conversations, you're gonna educate people. On like what a revolution looks like. Yeah, like imagine like, instead of reading fucking Kite Runner, you read Revolutionary Suicide. Bro. You feel me? Like, <laughs> like, you feel me? Like bro. imagine that though. Yeah, like, bro, you read Shakespeare, nigga. Yeah, why not? like read some Aji Lord, nigga. Like what the yeah. fuck? I'm trying to read that shit. Read some Kimberly Crenshaw. Yeah, like, like, come nigga, on. Like imagine though, like imagine if instead of like you was reading fucking uh, the autobiography the, of George Washington. Yeah, nigga, what's well, the, I want to read a side of Shakur, nigga. Come on. Fuck, what's the other two about them two niggas who was like? Fuck, y'all know what I'm talking about, too. Oh, my God. They make you read this shit in every English class. It's like those two niggas 
Or like on the run. Yeah, that bullshit. (laughs) (laughs) Nigga, what the fuck? That's so funny, bro. He's like, yeah, these two niggas. I knew what you was talking about, too. Fuck up, Barry Finn, nigga. Like, trying to read that shit. Fuck up, Finn, nigga. I'm trying to learn about Huey and Bobby. Yeah, read some Baldwin or something. You feel me? Like, imagine if they was really pushing our learning. Oh, my God. But we we read exactly what they want us to read. Exactly. I mean, education in this white capitalist system is a form of propaganda and mind control. Bro, I read some some shit earlier today. It was like, you can tell the priorities... Of a country based on what they teach their students, you can yeah. tell like what they're uh, grooming them to be. Mm-hmm. You feel what I'm saying? Like in America, we're grooming students to be fucking not think for themselves. Nah, I mean, but even if you look at like how classrooms are structured, right? So yeah. it's like you have these small little desks, right? And they're all in order, you know? Like they're all in like a line, essentially. That's basically, you know, they're trying to create people to work in the factories. Yeah. Right? That's what they're literally training you to work in a factory. And schools today is still that same system. You feel me? So, like, the way I teach, I don't teach like that. I'm like, that should give me anxiety as a teacher. I'm like, bro, we got to move all these chairs. Like, move this shit into a circle. Yeah. That was actually, like, a black feminist intervention into the classroom was moving shit in a circle. Yeah. Like, I sit, I usually try to sit down when I teach. Yeah. You feel me? Because, like, even when you're standing as an educator and your students are sitting, that's creating a different power dynamic. Yeah. So, I'm trying to sit. And some people are like, why are you sitting? Why are you lazy? I'm like, nah, it's, like, actually a part of my, a part of my like, pedagogy that I use. You feel yeah. me? Like it's Can you the, describe what pedagogy? Find, I yeah. hate that term. Pedagogy, bro, it's just, it, like, yeah. a simple way in the teaching style. A yeah. simple way of saying teaching style. So like, the way you... say teaching style? I don't know, nigga. <laughs> it's that academy shit. You up there, your ivory tower, me? man. I'm telling my, you, eating my coleslaw and sweet potato fries and shit. This hey, is all a part of it. Sweet potato fries are good. Co and tell pro alive in the flesh. <laughs> shit you is foul. happening. You fell. <laughs> hey. Nah, but like, shout that's, out this pure white though. Yeah, that shit is <laughs> that shit is real though. Like, definitely, like. Yeah. It's important, but like, just the just in the way that like schools. But that's the thing. I haven't really like studied any other like way to. Yeah, like, I don't know how, like, how school is in other countries. Like, I've never, like, really, like, dabbled into it. I just know, like, the way that we teach and learn in America is just, like, for sure not right. I don't know, like, what they're doing in Africa, you feel me? In Asia, I don't know. Yeah. But I know, like, I know, like, in Germany, they, basically, you don't have to, like, to go to medical school, you can go out to medical school at, like, age 18. So, like, if you already know what you want to do, you know, like, college, in a way, is a trap. You know, because it's a cycle of debt that they're going to finish. Fin- fin- not in a way. Me? It not is. in a way, yeah. It, did, it definitely is. is, yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, they teach you to go to college, you feel me, become a part of the status quo, and you $100,000 in debt, and then what are you going to do? You finna go corporate. You ain't going to follow the dreams that you have, right? Instead yeah. of like, become, you know, getting a trade instead. Am I still me? here? Yeah, you good. You good. Well, I'm only hearing myself with one earphone, though. I don't know. Hold on, P. I don't know what the fuck going on. Hold on. Okay, I hear myself, but like it's only it's literally a one earphone. For real, nuts, yeah. might be the earphone bad. I can hear you though. Keep going. All right. Oh, there we go. What the fuck was that? I don't know, man. You need to clean your ears, bro. <laughs> Hello, black. You know we be talking shit. <laughs> talk about my calls, so I'm gonna talk about your ears, nigga. <laughs> Oh, fuck. Hey, shout out to all the niggas who eat coleslaw. You feel me? Trying to get their greens in. You know what I'm saying? Not, sh- <laughs> not shout out to all the... No, no shout out. Death to all the niggas that eat coleslaw. Oh, shit. Fucking fans. Yeah. So, but yeah. It's important to have radical educators. And we need them. And we need them. And we got to so support them. It's just so fucked up because teaching know? is just like such a... If you think about how much time you put in based on pay, like niggas is getting like pennies. Pennies, bro. And like... To be a teacher too, like you know, I teach in college, but like to be a, a teacher in grade school, you teaching five periods, six periods without a break, bro. Like that's that's some many shit. When bro. I was teaching, we had like a little like a well, you, you like you get like with that one off period. Yeah. But it's like even then you spend that period like probably catching up for your next one or fucking grading some shit. You know, it's just fucking nuts, bro. And I was only teaching PE in behind on grades. Like what the fuck, nigga? That is sick. I couldn't imagine if I was teaching a. A fucking subject that required preparation for the next grade. Like where every day yeah. counts. Like yeah. every day. Just you being off by a little bit. You know, it's going to throw you off track, bro. So, like, but it, again, it shows the priorities of this country where police officers are making more than teachers. <laughs> that shit makes me fucking sick. Like, oh, yeah, man. man, like police officers are really. And the thing is, bro, like to be a teacher, you got to do a four year degree and then you got to go get your credential. Pigs, you feel me? All you have to do is get your GED. Like it's required for you to be like a moron. 
to be a pig. We don't want no smart folks. We don't want them because if you're smart, you're finna challenge what we say. How dumb this shit is. Like, but we really we got to make a push. I feel like you know if we talking, we really got to make a push to support educators more. Fast. Like Every, everybody loves educators, but no one loves educators. Nah, it's like it's cool to be like, oh yeah, your teacher's sick, but teachers will teachers yeah. save the world. They they prepare our children for the future. Okay, but, okay, let's pay them forty five k a year to live in the fucking Bay Area where rent is on average like fucking thirteen hundred dollars in Oakland. Like <laughs> you can't afford it. And I, I, some of my uh, my young niggas who went to Mac, they yeah. was they did a research project and it was basically talking about how their teachers are like. Essentially having to leave Mac, or they're just living hella far away, or living with hella people. And then imagine how that you affects me? you coming into work each day, having to deal with. And they still putting their all in to support their kids, they students. You feel me? Like I'm close with a couple of the teachers at the schools that I work with, and they just be bro, like hearing the shit they got to go through on a daily on a daily basis, bro. It's like fuck, and y'all not getting compensated at all. Niggas is barely getting by, bro. Shit is fucking sad. Donald Trump sad. That nigga be all caps and an exclamation. <laughs> Sad. Bruh. See, man. See, there's some nuts shit going on. Bruh. The fuck is going on, man? This nigga, man. Too much. It's that wire he got on. <laughs> Fucking up this It's because you talking too loud in this shit. See? See that shit right there? See you talking too loud, nigga. Man, whatever. Let's, <laughs> let's move on to Black Let's get joy, to this episode, yeah. Black anger, nigga. What? Black joy. What? What, brought, what brought you some Black what? Joy since the last episode? Black Joy? Oh, shit. I was out the country living my best life. I was living like a white woman who has a trust fund. Man. <laughs> I was in uh, Cabo St. Lucas. It was like my first time just like sliding to the neck by myself. You feel me? Just taking a vacation out the country. Taking a vacation for more than seven days. I haven't done that probably since I graduated college. So mm-hmm. it was just good to uh, change up the view, you know? Like living in the Bay Area my whole life, it's just like it's a similar scene. You feel me? Yeah. So like being able to get out the country and see something new. That shit was a move. That shit was lit. So, so that's was your just, first time traveling by yourself. Somewhere? That was my first time driving by, like being by myself, traveling by myself, out the country by myself. Like that shit can so be it nuts. was it was cool. It was a lot of like personal growth. You feel me? Yeah. Just like you build more confidence in yourself. You find out things about yourself just being by yourself. Like you was on vacation though. So yeah. that's like yeah, definitely. Like I told you, like bro, make sure you take some time to do like a lot of reflecting and a lot of thinking. Yeah, I've traveled by myself before for work and it was bunk as fuck. It yeah, I've traveled for work. I was so lonely. For real. Yeah. Yeah, I just be. When I travel for work, I just be uh, at the bar. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> by, by myself. <laughs> I was so I went to New York by myself like a year and a half ago for some for some shit, and I was fucking lonely and depressed and shit. But yeah, back to Cabo, bro. Yeah, that shit was beautiful out there. Sun sitting out by the pool. You know, I can't really swim well, but you know, I'm tall enough to just be able to stand this shit. <laughs> Did you so like beaches was, uh, and shit out there? Yeah, it was beach, yeah. but it was many. It was like a hurricane weren't warning and shit. Was like it hot the waves. out there? Bro, that shit was like 92 every day. And humid, bro. But you just be by the pool and shit, so you don't even really feel it, you know. So like, shout out to Cabo. That shit yeah. was lit. I ain't never been there, bro. I know you're saying we should, we go, finna slide, we should bro. go in December, but... I felt cool. I felt like I was a part of uh, Black Passport Twitter, you feel me? Oh, yeah. So Black instead of buying Black Jordans, Black. I bought my uh, passport. You know it's better than Jordans? Passports. Passports. Like, get, the fuck? get your stamps up, nigga. You niggas the, focus about the wrong things. Yeah, These bro. Out here buying J's and Y'all shit. over here buying, buying stamps fucking up, Louis nigga. belts and shit. Get, get your, your stamps, stamps up, bro. Fuck. Follow us on Twitter at Blavity. Come on. Damn, bro. Why you got to diss them niggas? Hey. I don't even know shit about them, honestly. Didn't you used to write for them? Nah. You ain't never wrote nothing for Blavity? I don't think so. Oh. I might have. I, I sure, don't think so. I for sure pitched some shit to them before I knew what they was. Yeah. That's why I, I, I pitched some shit for I them wrote before. In the sand, and I think that, that, that ghosted me. I would have wrote in the sand at that point. <laughs> I would have wrote anywhere. <laughs> I would have wrote anything anywhere, nigga. They're they trying to do better, though. I feel like I think they've seen how Twitter has just kind of came for them. Yeah, you yeah. feel me? In terms of the content and shit. So hopefully, hopefully they're doing better. But, yeah. you know, we don't need no more BETs. We need some radical shit. But anyways, bro, so how, was your, how was your... Uh, what was your Black Joy moment, bro? When's the last time we linked up? Like Me and you? Ago? I'm talking about... Oh, the, for the podcast? Yeah. Like three weeks ago? Shit, the breakfast program was lit. Oh, yeah, huh? We haven't recorded since the breakfast program. We did the breakfast program, and then, nigga, we all went out to eat afterwards. That shit was smacking. Then we went to my house afterwards and got even more faded, nigga. <laughs> then we went to 938 after that. Shout out 938 uh, Crawfish over on San Pablo and all Shit, we just left there. Up. Y'all pull up and speak to my man, Tony. He gonna take real good care of y'all. Um, y'all order the Delenciagas. 
I got my own wing up there. <laughs> Y'all fuck with me. I'm telling you, it's a beautiful thing. But yeah, after the breakfast program, we went to fucking trap brunch at fucking halftime. Shout out halftime, the greatest <laughs> place see on how earth. Excited this nigga is. <laughs> oh, 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 Shout out halftime, the greatest place on earth. It's fucking Disneyland yeah. in Oakland year round. Um, I love it. Shout out to all the the waitresses up there that take care of us when we get there. Shout out to chef. He be throwing down with them shrimp po boys. But yeah, so we did the um breakfast program. Then we went to trap brunch and got fucking lit. Ate really well. Then we went back to my house and got faded. And like we we drank like two fifths of Hennessy in like an hour. Sounds like it. Then we went to nine three eight and ate and drank some more Hennessy. And we got faded. It's good, Uncle. You might they might see you on camera. Come come, come pull up though. <laughs> come pull up. I said you on you on camera, camera but it's good. Don't, don't worry. Oh, ain't true. You straight? It's the hell of a back way. We keep recording. You feel right, me? We don't stop. Just in what, case. What, uh, what you need? Box right here. Box. The white one. We got a little color. See these. It's brown. Box hell papers in it. We'll see right here. Do it on your other boy. That's what I'm talking about. No, no. Look at this. You tell him what color is I won't know. Y'all in the snake pit, huh? <laughs> <laughs> no clean as room, man. Yeah. No clean as room up. Look. Hey, don't. He probably listens to this. Don't diss my man's on camera. <laughs> 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 he literally told me that. Oh, camera too? Like, oh, shit. Turn around. Turn back and notice all the fucking bags. <laughs> They clean the room with all this shit in the room. Oh, <laughs> room clean now. <laughs> this is a shame, bro. See how these niggas do. Uh, fuck, I lost my train of thought, though. <laughs> Don't edit that out, either. Nah, we keeping this shit in. <laughs> Don't edit that out, either. Oh, yeah. We went to, we went to 9 8 and got faded. I don't know. You we had two fists at your house. Yeah, but yeah, like, just that whole Saturday was dope, bro. Just doing the whole breakfast program. Going to the one of the, probably the t- two best restaurants yeah. in the Bay Area. In All the in the same, matter. Yeah. Excuse me, like same 12 hours. hours. <laughs> I loved it, bro. So that's what brought me some black joy. Yeah, that breakfast program was lit too, bro. Like, Look what this nigga Cad just texted me. Yeah, bro, that's the shit I was telling you about. That's the shit we got in the notes. Bro, so we, might as well yeah, just, I, we might as well just yeah, segue so into I'm this gonna shit. Segue into so this, this was what we was going to talk about anyway. Gino, I don't know. Maybe you'll zoom in on that when it's time to go. Your nigga Spike Lee... Opley, we should just Opley. call him Opley. Damn, we don't call nigga Opley. I mean, this nigga, what it, yeah, this nigga taking two hundred thousand from for NYPD, the New York Pig Department. The same, the same department I'm that pretty that sure this nigga. That's what I'm saying. I'm like, who, who, whose side are you on, bro? I don't understand. I mean, he just said whose side he's well, on. Well, yeah, actions are louder than words. <laughs> so he got paid two hundred k to do a fucking marketing for the New York Pig Department, bro. NYPD is one of the largest police departments in the country, bro. They're like their police department is bigger than some fucking country's militaries, bro. Spike Lee was for sure wearing a um I can't breathe shirt at some point. I bet of he course, was. I bet he was because he's he the type was, of nigga bro. to make a movie about some black shit, but then take a check from the ops, bro. You feel me? Like, and this that's, is that's that shit about why we say, bro. Like like you say this shit all the time is like judge people by their fucking actions. Just bro, like that shit is somebody so could say Black bro. Lives Matter. But if they taking two hundred k from the police, what does that make? Do you? they really matter? Like this is this is what I understand, bro. It's like he always people, be courtside too. He was probably courtside when that I can't breathe shit. People people say people say one thing, but their actions totally they totally do something else, bro. So with a nigga like Spike Lee, anyway, I wasn't feeling like I'm not surprised by this after I seen Black Klansman. And did um, you say Black Klansman was pretty pro cop too? Yeah, it, it was. It was. It was for sure pro cop. It was like. Trying to show us that as we as black folks can work within the system, and it really had me fucked up. This is a spoiler alert, so at this point, if you haven't seen Black Klansman and you gonna see it, you might as well off. not even see it. But if you can see a black that revolutionary, <laughs> don't go see this shit. But yeah, the nigga like at one point, you know, you got the black college students who are organizing this shit, um, you know, working in this fucking in Colorado Springs where the Klan is like alive and present and flourishing, nigga, and you know. At the end, you see, like, basically at the end, to make a long story short, you see the fucking revolutionaries teaming up with the cops to fucking take down a bad cop. Like, what the fuck is that? Nigga, that will never happen. But see, that's like a propaganda bomb. It right? is, bro. It's teaching, it's saying, like, as a revolutionary or as a, not a revolution, I don't even want to use that word for that, but as a quote-unquote black activist, you're supposed to work with the police type shit. Like, that's essentially what it's saying. It's telling, like, these... Like, imagine if you're a young kid, you're like, oh, yeah, the cops helped out with the Klan, even though the cops is the Klan type shit. Right, and it negates the history of like the CIA and the FBI and using pretty, bro, KKK members to actually do the some more revisionist like, violent shit, too. shit. Like, the shit that happened in that film. I'm like, it's based on a true story, but like, how much, like, and even then, yeah. okay, if that's one 
police force that's helping to take down one bad cop? Okay, bro. Yeah, the bar is the fucking floor. It I mean, I don't know why the they floor, said bro. Spike Lee made it, bro. He probably the FBI probably produced that motherfucker. He had probably a earpiece and like do this it, shit. Yeah. And this was at this point, I'm just like, bro, when are black revolutionaries really going to get a film for them, bro? When, bro? Shit, we gonna have to make it, bro. Shit is fucking. Cause bad. that shit. That shit gonna go straight to DVD. You know, ain't nobody supporting that shit. Shit, whatever. We sold at Ashby. <laughs> <laughs> straight to DVD. Sell at the flea market. But like, swear to God. You teaming up with the NYP dude who used to be doing the stop and frisk shit? Still do it. Still. Come Eric on, Garner, bro. bro. All the people they done killed over the years. Come on, bro. Like. NYPD been foul as fuck, bro. And you doing a marketing <laughs> campaign? That's that black capitalist neoliberal shit, bro. It's like, you got all this money, you got this big ass check, and then you show. Like, the thing is, bro, like, Spike Lee got money. I'm like, is you that broke, nigga? Like, there's right. no way you broke. You got money, bro. This nigga put a movie out every five years. And, but you know, Spike Lee also be crowdfunding his movie. So, yeah, that probably even even is even more of a reason for him to have some money in his pocket. Bro, he he first row of every fucking, uh, what, Knicks game? He ain't heard from money. It's just so disgusting. He crowdfunded just for himself, bro. <laughs> it's, just, it's, it's, it's just so disgusting to, like, know that. And that's, like, these, these are the black folks that get put on the pedestal and get, like, you know, oh, be like them. Yeah, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, niggas who really support this white supremacist society, bro. Like, you teaming up with the police, the group that is known for terrorizing black folks. Especially. Across this nation, bro. Especially at this moment in in history. You feel white me? Like, Cap is out here. Moment, like, fucking protesting the police brutality. Spike Lee is like, I'm going to make a better campaign for it. And now I watch Spike Lee try to make a movie about Kaepernick in five years too. Hey, he said, "I'm gonna do you a you better nigga." First. You go, or you go protest against it. I'm gonna make a marketing campaign for it. Fucking pig, bro. I mean, that's, really op, that's some op ass shit, bro. So I mean, you making hate, money bro. off of Black Death, essentially. You making that's that's what you are. You know what I'm saying? Like you ain't no better than fuck Spike Lee, bro. You ain't no yeah. I don't so, give a fuck, bro. Like how I be feeling, bro. Like you know, in like both the fields. That we work in, it's probably going to lead to us meeting a lot of these people that we talk about. But, like, bro, you a op, you a op, period, point blank, bro. You know where I stand, bro. Like, Straight I'm like not going to. And it's like, bro, these people are, there's no way you're that oblivious to what's going on. There's no way you're that naive. You know exactly what you're doing, bro, by teaming up with NYPD. I mean, period, people wasn't blank. fucking with him after he made uh, Chirac. Like, people Chirac, in Chicago yeah. was hell mad. People was running up on him type shit, you know? Like, the way he essentially has just... Made money and commodified all the black the black pain story. Yeah. You you feel me or the black struggle, like he's commodified it, sold it. And I mean, made but his, like made his bag off of it. I'm trying to choose my you words know? carefully here, but it's like you should be able to like talk about it, right? But like, is is it about the way you go about doing it? Because I feel like with in in Chirac, people were upset that like there weren't many Chicago folks involved, and they was like, this ain't our story. Like, you know what I'm saying? So like, yeah. if you do that, if you're not even tapping in with the people that you represent. Or like you're trying to represent via your movie, mm-hmm. then you on some other shit. You know yeah, you make it. You not you not centering the people. Yeah, but I'm you're like not centering. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. you should be able to make a movie centering the people. Facts. But if you ain't centering the people, you actually, know what I'm saying? You know, actually, don't have the people or in telling the movie the story. or having them right. helping you. Like they're not in your writer's room, then that's a problem. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or centering the like centering the families. You feel me? Or like really telling the story. And it's like if you're making money, in my opinion, if you're making money off of like. Homicide victims, that's what Chirac was about, right? Mm-hmm. What are you doing for the people who've been killed or the families, you know? Shit like that. Like, you trying to help out yeah. or you just making your money off of it. You feel me? That's why, I like, I was upset after uh, just, like, the, the Super Bowl. You know, it's like they had, the, you know, the Black Panther. Beyonce did the whole Black Panther thing, right? I was just like, bro, like, you got hell Panthers down right now. You feel me? And it's like this black militancy has been co-opted, right, yeah. in a lot of ways by someone just making hell of bread off of it. Yeah. You know, so it's like, you can do that, but also, A, what are you doing type shit? Like, are you talking about the Panthers who are still locked up right now? No. Are you funding black radicals? I don't even know any of them. Probably wouldn't know their names, bro, to be honest. Yeah, so it's like, this is something that people, I would say, who are high up in the movement, I guess, are mm-hmm. doing. There's people who are making, you know, celebrities are doing, making money. People like, bro, Kaepernick's been blackballed. And not many people are speaking out about that shit. You right. had you, how many people you had taking a knee? That's what I'm saying. So you got you got all these folks who just like claim to be about all the shit they talk about, but it's like or who claim to be about um, this revolutionary shit, 
who claim to want black liberation, yeah. but like none of their actions are aligning with what black liberation looks like. Exactly. Oh, so I was like, what is your free? Like, what is. So now it's like, okay, we obviously got two ideas. What's well, because we in this quote unquote look like. woke trademark movement? You feel me? So you got all this woke, you know, all yeah. this woke trademark shit. And essentially it's just like woke has become a commodity, right? Being somewhat political has become a commodity where it's been weaponized, right? So you yeah. have these struggles of these very radical black militants essentially being co opted, their aesthetic being used. But you're not supporting black radical militants right now. And, it's and that's just, the oh issue. Oh my God, it's so sad because like black folks want liberation. Like, not, not I'm not speaking about the folks that you're talking about. I'm talking like, like the, the niggas that we be around. Like, poor right. black folks want something to believe in, bro. And, and people you, are fucking yeah. taking advantage of that and manipulating mm-hmm. the fuck out of us, bro. Yeah. That's all it is, bro. I remember early on in like my teachings and my and my learnings, bro, I was like falling for all this shit, bro. And so I really started to see like even these niggas is like once awesome. you really learn shit. how to see what the fun what the system is and how it functions and the different levels and players, then you start to be able to like, okay, assign fucking labels to people like, hold on, you do exactly what this person do. Like literally you gotta realize that like just because you look like me don't mean you on my team. Like it's hard Early on to think that like damn, black folks, mm-hmm. like there are some black folks who align with whites. There's a lot. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, it's, hard to, the it's hard to like. It's hard to process that when you first, you know, like, yeah, you think that everyone can relate to your struggle. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Yeah, you see like the performative. Yeah. The performance of of I guess like black cultural shit, right? And you so can you call see up o- in words, right? Yeah. So you see Obama, actions. you know, like. That viral shit on Vine of him shaking the white dude's hands and then LeBron, he goes, you know, daps him up. Like, people are like, oh, shit, Obama hella cool. But that nigga just dropped so, hella bombs, you know what I'm saying? so dangerous, bro. So I think it's important if you just, that's like what you say, like, judge people by their actions. If you take their actions, write it down on a piece of paper, you know, and just, like, put a random-ass name on it. Like, damn, this nigga took 200000 from the police. He didn't put any, he didn't consult with any... Of the victims, or like any poor black people in Chicago when he made this movie. Right. Um, and you just like continue to work down the list. It's like, damn, this nigga is a op. Facts. You know so I saying? think. And this- you could do that, you could do that with hella black leaders, right? Like even look, look at Beyonce. I love Beyonce so much. Oh my God, just. Oh, fuck, it hurts to say this. <sighs> Speaking. But look at Beyonce, right? If she's doing all this Black Panther shit, but then she not putting any money on these motherfuckers' books. She not lobbying to get any of them pardoned, to get any of them on parole. She ain't saying free Jalil. You know what I'm saying? It's like, ah. Like, why not throw a shirt of all the political prisoners on while you perform? You feel me? But it is what it is, man. Like I said, I love you. Damn, that hurt. That hurt to say that. You all right? Yeah, bro, I think I'm going to be all right. Here, take some hand. I'll be all right. You know, I got, is it, I don't even know if it's, it's uh, I'm not even going to say it, never mind, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> I've said too much already. <laughs> I hope the beehive. Damn, we on video now. Yeah. I don't know how I feel about drinking on camera. Nigga, you already did it the last episode. For real, we, we had bottles in that one? Yeah, we had some pure white. Man, it just be like, niggas be on this respectability politics shit. Like, I, before I drink this pure white, because I'm going to drink it, I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Recently, I seen some shit where somebody at a school was saying that they don't want to see grills in because it's a dental hazard. Nigga, I wear a grill when I teach. It's a dental hazard, nigga? What the fuck? Nigga, that's like saying I don't want to... Like, you're not worried about kids eating candy and that greasy-ass processed food you sell them? That's mm-hmm. all types of... You giving your kids Jolly Ranchers for being quiet in class? Like, just go ahead <laughs> out and say it that black boys with grills and black kids with grills scare you. You fair. You just fear go ahead and fear. say that. Just go ahead and say that that's a trigger for you. Don't say it's a dental hazard. Who the fuck you think you talking to? Kid? Kids? Nigga, literally, like, we are adults in this room. Bruh. Bruh, like, I was on this retreat today with my students, bruh, and we asked this white lady, that was our mistake, first mistake, we asked this white lady to take a photo of us all, you feel me? And then we take one, you know, funny one, and then we take, like, just fucking around, we just, like, going like this, everybody going like this, she's like, are you sure you want to be throwing up those hand signs? Like, she's like, what does that mean? I said, black lives matter. <laughs> And you know what, like, scares me sometimes about, uh, like, I f- often fear, like, all the white people that are, like, comfortable by me, especially in my workplace, and, like, I don't be, like, they know my politics in there. Like, I be checking, I be saying shit, I be speaking what's on my mind, like, all this shit, right? But, like, I kind of, f- I think that, like, they, like, fucking, like, um, glorify that, and if they ever seen it in real time, like, if they seen the niggas that I hang around, if they see the communities that I be in, I think it would change the way they look at me. 
And like that's what like, I I feel like not I feel like I know for a fact that what, what how white folks see like um it's okay to have like two black people. Yeah, like I feel like <laughs> when they even talk about yeah, you know we want we want liberation, we want to dismantle the system, we want black kids to be free, but like they want to they want to put boundaries and on their freedom. Limitations on to what that they want to just they want to fucking define freedom for us. for black folks. And that's not freedom at all. You know what I'm saying? So when they talk about like, you know, not seeing color and all that bullshit, bro, it's just like, what do you mean, bro? Like, you don't really want me to be my true self. You don't want that. You want me to be my black self in a way that's comfortable and fitting for you. Bro, they say they don't see color. I'm like, how'd you get to work with all these stoplights? <laughs> <laughs> Yo, shit would be in the hospital right now. Yeah. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> but it's just like, bro, it's, it's so sad. Like, especially you hear like, you, like right now, bro, what's popular in schools is saying like, oh, we want to dismantle the system. We want to fight white supremacy. You know, we want to liberate black folks. But it's like, yo, liberation has limits on it. Like, you trying to tell motherfuckers that they can't wear grills to school? First of all. trying to tell girls how they should dress when they come to school. They shouldn't dress like this and that. Like, bro, come on, fam. I'm not with that shit, bro. I'm not with it at all. I don't respect it. Yeah. I'm sick of it, bro. I don't really give a fuck about opinions of settlers. Like, you stole this land. I don't care. Facts. Like, Nah. Like, we on Native American land, bruh. We on Ohlone land right now. Like, what are, people, what, are, what are they doing to support Natives? You feel me? What are they doing to support black people? Like, yeah. it's cool to talk about black people. It's cool to say liberation this, liberation that. But then, are you going to advocate for a black kid to not be suspended at your school? You know? Are you going to advocate for them to get resources? Yeah. How are you treating your, How are you treating black people off of campus? That's what I be fearing. I'm like, bro, y'all love talking about this shit at schools. Are you like, going to advocate to get OPD black, off of the campus? Yeah, how do you treat black kids when they're not in your classroom? Bro, I just saw, I was reading this article and it was talking about how Oakland school police only started in like the 1950s once black people started moving to Oakland. Like, it's when they started Oakland school police. I believe it. I really do. Yeah. Not surprised at all. But, you know. It's, this is what it is. That's why it's important, I think, to talk about this shit. Because oftentimes we, uh, we're taught not to talk about it. Yeah. You know, we're taught to be like, all right, just to uh, keep it pushing, you know, just be a, be respectable about it, I guess. You know, not talk about these things. But I think it's important we have these conversations, you feel me? Because if we don't have the conversations, we ain't learning from it, you know? Yeah. So, I don't know. We're this shit f- whack. We're about 40 minutes in now, bro. 40 minutes in. We yeah. got like... 12 minutes of this no. episode and we're gonna do this uh, Patreon special special hopefully we don't get locked up in Patreon jail again oh we didn't even talk Wait, about what yeah, happened let's, let's definitely go on to Patreon jail yeah. what's you wanna go ahead and tell that story yeah. since it kinda you came just, from you yeah and we bounced back off of it yeah so we we chilling you know hanging out I think we was uh, we were in Yuba shout out Maya just chilling you feel me having a good time just trying to get away you know relax I fucked up checked my email <laughs> I got an email from Patreon saying your account has been suspended and basically they was talking about you know me and DeWinsky we was at the uh, march for Neil Wilson you feel me and like I was out there tweeting you know just talking about what's going on at the protests and whatnot. and basically these white motherfuckers these uh, quote unquote proud boys or whatever the hell they, they be referred to some white supremacists was out there and uh got that shit blinked. yeah they got they got rocked <laughs> <laughs> they got their shoes stolen, all that uh, shit, bro. Real, real fast. That shit was hilarious. Like, <laughs> they, they ass got jumped, bro. I love this and the shit, they was so funny, bro, because they walked out smiling and shit, like thinking they was bro, in downtown I've Berkeley. I've seen a lot of you know? fights. I ain't never seen a nigga, like, as soon as they foot step out the door, I'm not just getting whooped. Nigga, that Fired shit was off. hella funny, bro. Oh, my God. <laughs> That shit was hilarious. Uh, that was that was some black joy. Uh-huh. But so I, I tweeted the photo of the motherfucker who got his. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> who got his shoes taken and shit. And I was like, who is this type shit? Like, you know, I think it's important that we know who uh, white supremacists are. Who are just, you shouldn't be able to just roam the streets Fuck no. as a white supremacist who is advocating for the extermination of a people. Yeah. Right? So I tweeted a photo, not even saying, give me his personal information. I'm saying, this motherfucker got his shoes thrown and his ass beat. Someone, ad- someone identify him, right? I chose my words very carefully, too. Mm-hmm. I've been suspended by Twitter before. Like, I ain't trying to get my shit suspended again because. Like, you know, for the breakfast program, shit like that, you know. And uh, so we get suspended and they say, you need to delete this tweet, essentially, right? But first of all, this isn't, like, I didn't say shit on Patreon. 
This is a whole so other platform. You from a whole other platform. Like, what are y'all doing watching my tweets on some weird shit? And it's not from the Hello Black tweet Twitter account. It's, it's my own account. My account. Twitter says views my own personally for a reason. So I'm representing myself because I know I'm involved with other things. Do you feel me? Yeah. So it's like, yeah. They essentially like, you got to delete the tweet. Otherwise, you ain't finna get your money type shit. I'm like, it ain't even worth the battle in my opinion. You know, we went back and forth for a little bit, but I was like, it ain't what worth the battle. What they say you were dox- dox- What is it? They, they, they said I was doxing, uh-huh. but that's not doxing. By definition, that's by not definition, what By definition, by legally, yeah. like that is not a... Doxing. I didn't but then they say no you put you put him in a position for someone else to dox him. Yeah, or someone else to hurt him. Yeah. I'm like, so you're assuming that I'm advocating for violence? I never said anything about violence. That's you assuming that, right? Yeah. So it's just the whole. It just shows that the First Amendment don't really apply to black radicals, bro. And it's not like I was saying some radical ass shit. Like, who is this motherfucker? Like, you have a right to take a photo of somebody in this country, type shit. But as you can remember, with you know? with, with Nia's killer, bro, like Facebook deleted all his racist ass. Yeah, this motherfucker was posting on some racist shit, saying the N-word all the time and shit. Like, yeah, and so Facebook deleted his so account. So it's like, bro, these platforms will go above and beyond to protect, to protect white folks. Yes. Yes, bro. That's exactly what they're doing. Like, they're literally, by looking at what they did, they're protecting a white supremacist. We don't want his fucking information to get out there. So, therefore, we're going to need you to delete the tweet. That's what happened. We're yeah. worried about his safety. Essentially. They are worried about the safety of a white supremacist, not of the a, safety of all the black folks in Oakland. Of a proud boy. Like, just that shit was just so foul. But you were really going to come after me after, like, hearing what's going on with Neil Wilson? You know? Yeah, man. That shit is, I'm like, not surprised. All, I mean, I'm not surprised either, but you were, quote unquote, I mean, the thing is, they're located in San Francisco. Yeah, fuck Patreon, nigga. I don't give a fuck. Y'all yeah, say. <laughs> Hello? Take my shit, nigga. Go fuck. Niggas out here act. Acting like they just some type of fucking, well, we know what progressive means, but they act like they really out here trying to support help independent creators and shit. Nah, nigga, y'all here policing motherfuckers from a whole another platform. That don't got shit to do with our fucking Patreon account. Like, how did y'all like? What the fuck? I mean, essentially, they probably were following. Like, so I posted the photo. I'm sure that ended up on some like 4chan or Reddit or whatever of some white supremacists. They probably all reported it. So in, in a way, I'm like, good. I spooked these motherfuckers. Like they're not trying to get exposed. I'm like, what shit. was the thought? Like, what was the what was the fucking the, I'm sure the it got process reported. to that? Yeah. Like, was Patreon fucking scanning your fucking tweets? Like, nigga, what the fuck? Right. And if they were, that's like thinking about like your Twitter account's right? not even connected to our like literally. You didn't sign up through Patreon through your Twitter account. Nah. How you don't have? How did they even know it was you? I don't even know. That's a good question. From the wait, probably my photo. Code, yeah, in your bio, you got codes of hella black, right? Yeah. But it's like nigga, like they're doing, they're doing too much work to protect this white boy, bro. And to try and fuck up our money, type shit, like. In the process of protecting a white supremacist, you're willing to take money away from black folks. Yeah, yeah. for sure, I get it. For sounds sure. sounds about white. Bro, you know, all these like, bro, all these Patreon, tech companies. Like, I don't give act, a fuck. Yeah. You can shut my shit down. I do not care. That's why it's like, bro. This shit's bigger than this shit's bigger than a check. Like we ain't gonna shut up. Just because they put us on Patreon jail for four days. Like, we still finna talk our shit, bro. If you want to suspend us because of that, talk to my fucking lawyer. Hello? Yeah, that shit got me high all over again. Yeah, that shit was whack, but, you know, hell of black become a patron. I can only imagine, like... <laughs> but help us get us this cheese, because if we had more support, too, at the same time, like, they wouldn't be fucking with our But money. I'm just saying, I can only imagine, it's like, the poor... Like, if this was content, our only income. Like, yeah, like, imagine if this was, like, if we, was, yeah. if we needed that money to survive... You know what I'm saying? We like, wouldn't I'm be talking for... how we talking, so it's, it is even a privilege for us to talk yeah, this way. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, I can only imagine for the folks that like really like live off this money, like survive off this money, bro. That's you bullshit, wouldn't know where your bro. next check is. Like, you could have like essentially contributed to somebody being houseless. Like, if we were in that position, Come you know, on, bro. So that's why we finna talk about it. You know what I'm saying? Fuck so, niggas. fuck Patreon, kiss my ass. Hello, kiss my ass. Okay, so what? <laughs> Oh, that was shouldn't did that. That was foul. <laughs> Fuck, Hell I hate black. being trash. Hell of black, you know. It's, is that is just that, men are trash, so it's just... Is that episode 22? It's episode 20. Oh, shit, it's episode 22. We still got five minutes left, you feel me, of this episode. Then we're going to talk about uh, the Patreon, Patreon exclusive. You know, pa- What about for video purposes, though? Yeah, that shit can still go how much? How much time is on the video? We got 15, bro. So we gonna do ten minutes of exclusive content. Yeah, five minutes of this, oh, ten sure. minutes of exclusive. Well, back to being trash. I was thinking about this the other day when I was in the shower. Like I think people like to 
people like to admit they're trash, but then not do the necessary work to be better. I think admitting you're trash and not doing the work is much worse than being trash and not knowing you're trash. Like, I think niggas just try to be like, oh, you know, I'm actively working to get better. But not actively working to get better, that's just a fucking lazy ass excuse. Like, I see all the time people like, Especially like, and sometimes at, at my job, like we like to admit that, like you know, our system, our 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 organization is not exempt from perpetuating white supremacy. But then we won't do the necess- we don't always do the necessary work to um to not perpetuate the system. So it's like, bro, we're ultra trash for knowing better but not doing better. And that's what I see a lot of folks thinking. Like I think people think just admitting you're flawed and or trash is enough to get you off the hook when that's not the truth at all. So I just want niggas to stop with that lazy ass fucking rhetoric. Stop and people just like, I'm trash, so I'm finna just keep moving the same way type <laughs> shit. It's like, nah, if you trash, like, you at least gotta, like, try to be a little less trash. Like, at least try to recycle something. Like, yeah, man, I know, you man. Know, use a compost trash. or something, bro. Like, at least composting is better. You bro, know, you'd be like, at least, hey, bro. I'm composting instead of being trash, because <laughs> it's better than being landfill, you know? I think I'm compostable. Yeah. I think I'm on the. I wanna I wanna apologize to my job real quick. <laughs> <laughs> hey, don't fire my nigga, please. I wanna apologize. Don't fire my nigga. Hey, but no. My, the other day at the media, they were like, like we gotta stop protecting white tears. So y'all take your own advice. Yeah. If I give a a critique, because we gonna I'm solid man. Yeah. I'm a part of that problem though. Like I just said, you know what I'm saying. But I'm a I'm a person like Blake said earlier. I be judging myself by my own actions. I'm not typing it like I. I am what I do, not what I think. Yeah. Period. Point. But I don't give a fuck what I got going on in my head, whether that's for better or for worse. Sometimes I'm not as bad as I like to think I am. Sometimes, and I'm definitely not as good as I like to think I am. Like I just yeah. judge myself by my fucking actions. So if I can hold yeah. myself accountable, I should I should be able to hold others accountable. Yeah. What the fuck, nigga. But yeah, shout out my job. Hello. <laughs> so for the, for these last three minutes uh, of this episode that everybody get to listen to, I just want to talk about. Uh, Jaleel Mutakim, you know, he's my family member. He up for parole. Free my nigga. You feel me? He was a part of the Black Panther Party, a part of the Black Liberation Army. He'd been incarcerated for over uh, 47 years by the illegal COINTEL program in J. Edgar Hoover. He was like 18, bro, when he got locked up. You feel me? Still locked up to this day in New York. You know, he was uh, found, quote unquote, guilty for the New Kill killings. Um, what are the New Kill killings? It was basically New York. Um, they said he killed two NYPD officers. Um, but yeah, so the first trial ended in a hung jury in favor of acquittal and the second trial ended in a conviction of Jaleel for second degree murder. Right. So like basically a lot of the evidence, like the FBI kept ballistics evidence from the defense and it was later destroyed. So his defense team never even saw the ballistics report type shit, bro. Mm-hmm. And if they destroyed it. Right. And then they tried to bring it back up in court. They said, oh, that was minor. You feel me? So like they had no evidence linking him. That the destroying gun. the evidence was yeah. minor? Yeah, so they had no evidence essentially linking the gun to him type shit, right? So even when he was, you know, the judge was like, you're essentially a prisoner of war type shit. You feel me? So he got 25 to the L, you feel me? Mm-hmm. And every time he's come up for parole, they have not paroled him. Essentially because he has not backed down in terms of his, like, political activism. So he's done hella shit from prison, bro, like, in terms of writing and shit. And he's never changed his politics, you know? Mm-hmm. Like, he's evolved, of course. Like, you don't evolve your politics, but... He has always, you know, standed firm, stood firm in the black radical tradition. You know, so you have all these, like, police unions trying to keep him locked up. Now yeah. that he's, you know, he's been down. So if you listen to this shit and you got the time, bro, write a, write a letter, you feel me, um, to the parole board. There's information on my Twitter account. You feel me? You can DM me, too, at Blake Don't Crack. I can, can give you the instructions. He's up for parole. Hopefully in September he gets a parole hearing. Um, so yeah, free Jaleel, free all political prisoners, free all these people locked up, abolish all these fucking prisons, you feel me, like, this shit gotta go. It's wild, bro, I was just, I was just tweeting about this recently, I'm like, bro, the Panthers and all, like, um, leaders from that, from that time period, from that movement, get romanticized so much, and it's like, nigga, do y'all realize these people are still making sacrifices to this day? <laughs> these niggas still are still suffering alive, the consequences bro. to this Straight day for up. that shit, bro? Literally for fighting for black liberation. That's what I'm saying. Like, bro, like, that shit ain't a game. Like, even when we, when we be at these protests, who was, bro, that was at the Ferguson protest who's still in prison? That didn't do shit. Name is Josh. That didn't do, literally didn't do yeah. shit. He got, like, seven years. Didn't do shit. Free like, the, Josh, we could have been bro. at Nia's shit, bro, and went to prison. Yeah. Once they figure <laughs> out our politics. You feel what I'm saying? So, it's like, bro, like, people fucking be romanticizing the fuck out this shit, and it's not a game, bro. That's why I, I man, 
to the series is people who really gave their ent- entire life to this movement, bro. Gave their life and still, still sitting in prison for this shit, bro. Like, for what? You get in that you get in that courtroom and people find out you a black radical. It's over. Bro. Like he has it's kids, over, bro. he has kids, he has grandkids. Like he all the way in New York purposefully. You feel me? Like yeah. all my family from Oakland and in the South type shit. Like purposely moved them away, isolated them for the rest of his family, bro. So it makes it hard for him to us to visit him. Yeah. You know, so like literally spent hell of time in Attica. Attica is one of the worst prisons in the country. You know, is known for that, right? But he still, you know, maintained his spirituality. He converted to Islam, right? Done hell with good shit for people, even behind bars. Like, he is essentially like your model prisoner mm-hmm. type shit. Done hell with good shit, you feel me? From feeding people from inside a prison type shit, like, shit many. So, free Jaleel. Free him. You feel me? Go to freejaleel.com for more info or tap in with me at Blake Don't Crack. But freejaleel.com, you know, I'm trying to get my nigga out type free shit. All free, free all prison, political prisoners. Free all political prisoners. Straight up. You know.